Let's face it, when someone withholds sex from a partner, it creates a very sensitive and challenging dilemma. Is it a form of psychological abuse? If and when it is used as a tool for punishment or manipulation, it could be. But more often than not, it is a sign that someone was deeply hurt and is unable to overcome it. I'm Sindra Eberson, an internationally accredited post-traumatic growth specialist with a keen interest in intimate relationship dynamics. So I've worked with couples on the verge of breaking up in the midst of divorce and even long after when they've moved on and are struggling in new relationships with the same issues as before. That's why I'm so passionate about learning from our mistakes so that we don't repeat them. While you're here, please like my video and share it with anyone who might really need to hear this today. I often get messages from people saying, thank you so much for this. I felt as if you were speaking to me directly, or I so needed to hear this today. And if this conversation is meaningful to you, please subscribe to follow me and help me grow my reach. Thank you. Persistent sexual withholding can certainly breed resentment and feelings of neglect and rejection in any partner on the receiving end of such treatment. But it does warrant deeper investigation instead of just labeling it as a deliberate attempt to punish or get revenge. We know that individuals who are subjected to abuse as children may adopt similar patterns of behavior in their own relationships, perpetuating a cycle of harm. So if a child was punished by a parent in the form of withholding love and affection or ignoring them to the point of ne neglect, it can very well be learned behavior that often stems from past emotional or mental abuse. So let's explore the perspective of individuals from whom intimacy and sex is withheld. If you find yourself in a situation where you believe your partner is withholding intimacy and sex as a form of punishment for perceived wrongdoing, you probably feel undesired and trapped within the relationship, which will eventually turn into dissatisfaction and even resentment. Here's how you can navigate the situation. Communicate openly and honestly with your partner. Express your feelings and your needs without judging your partner and also without fear of being judged by your partner. You deserve a healthy, fulfilling and exciting intimate relationship and sex life. No matter how cold and distant your relationship is at the moment, one of the first steps you can take toward restoration is to model open and honest communication. Doing this will encourage your partner to reciprocate. I would also advise you to seek support from a therapist or a counselor to firstly try and understand possible underlying issues contributing to your partner's behavior, such as past trauma or communication barriers. And secondly, to address any underlying issues that might be contributing to your own behavior. You might also have unresolved past trauma and communication barriers affecting your relationship negatively. And thirdly, for the practitioner to facilitate constructive dialogue and problem solving between you and your partner, you deserve a healthy, close and safe bond with your partner, which is built on the foundation of open-hearted and unreserved communication. Constant rejection can be very painful and erode your self-esteem. So please also prioritize self-care and establish healthy boundaries to protect your well-being. I created a great online course on boundaries that you can complete within two hours if you'd like to learn more about what boundaries really are, why we need them, how to set your own healthy boundaries, 
and then maintain them, especially with people who disrespect or abuse you. Now let's explore the perspectives of individuals who avoid intimacy or withhold sex. Avoidant abuse, a form of emotional abuse, involves intentionally avoiding emotional connection and intimacy with someone, or in the case of this situation, a partner. However, in my personal experience and in my work with many clients, most of the time, Emotional connection and closeness and intimacy is, is avoided due to something painful that happened and prompted that person to close up, to protect themselves from being hurt more or being hurt again. Avoiding it altogether is easier than talking about it, admitting that there's something amiss or wrong, or even asking the partner to look at their own behavior and change something. People who avoid an issue are afraid of the reaction they might get, or they fear the pain they might feel, or they simply don't know how to bring it up. In fact, there are several reasons for avoidant behavior, too many for this video, which can be uncovered with the right guidance. But if you find yourself withholding intimacy from your partner, consider the following. Reflect on your reasons for avoiding intimacy. And please seek professional help to address underlying traumas, insecurities, fears, limiting beliefs, and behavioral patterns that you might have adopted from an early trauma response. This might be a very complex situation you find yourself in, but you owe it to yourself to do the deep personal work because you deserve a healthy, fulfilling and exciting intimate relationship and sex life. I also encourage you to engage in open communication with your partner, fostering empathy and understanding. If that is difficult for you, please reach out to me. I can help you work through that and obtain the skills and tools for authentic communication. Again, you deserve a healthy, close, and safe bond with your partner, which is built on the foundation of open-hearted and unreserved communication. Lastly, please take proactive steps to reconnect with your partner, please. This might seem like a mountain ahead of you, but believe me, it can be conquered. It takes two to tango, but it only takes one to be modest, honest, and vulnerable to break the ice. That being said, coercion and manipulation are insidious forms of abuse, often disguised as acts of love or obligation. Even subtle pressure to engage in sexual acts against one's will constitutes coercion. Remember, being in a relationship does not mean you owe your partner intimacy. Consent should always be freely given without coercion or manipulation. If the relationship is safe, the juices for intimacy will flow. But if the relationship is fundamentally unsafe, in the smallest way, intimacy will be the first thing to dry up. Sexual challenges or difficulties with intimacy require mutual understanding and effort to overcome. Healing and reconnecting takes courage, empathy, and a willingness to confront past traumas. If your sexual relationship has shifted from ecstasy to misery, whether you, you are the one avoiding it or the one being rejected, you both have to take time to uncover underlying pain and examine your role in the breakdown. Only then can you begin to co-create a solution together. Remember, healing is possible and true intimacy flourishes when nurtured with compassion and understanding. Embark on this journey together towards healing, connection and love. It can happen. It is possible. 
I have been privileged to guide and witness it many times. Reach out to me if you want it to. And in closing, I just want to let you know that our intimate relationships with lovers are the ones that push all our red buttons all the time. They bring out the best in us, but they also bring out the worst in us. But they also hold the key to the most profound personal growth we can possibly experience. There's nothing greater than the love and intimacy with a partner who has seen you at your ugliest, stuck it out while you learn to those hard life lessons and work through the pain to improve your bad behavior and still loves you more. Thank you for listening and learning. I'm Sintra Eberson and I invite you and your partner to get up and grow with me.